So you guys, I debated if I was even going to do this video. I am not a reaction channel. I am not a person who does reaction videos. I feel like whatever a person decides that they want to do in their journey for whatever they're doing in their life, it's up to them to do because they have every right. It's about choices and decisions and freedom to make those choices and decisions. Uh, I'm going to dive in and I'm going to talk about something that came up within the luxury handbag community a couple weeks ago. I am sure that by now you guys have all saw, seen the video that was posted by a young lady who is very much into Hermes handbags. It was purse on fleek and long story short, she talked about her experience with Hermes and how it just resulted in a very, very sour experience and left a, a, a pretty awful taste. I'm not here to talk about the intricacies of everything that went on in that video. In the process of watching and other people's feelings about that video and the issue that surrounds Hermes and the games that go on with regards to trying to get one of their coveted bags. I wanted to talk about that, but from a different perspective, how tied worthiness is to money in certain luxury handbag boutiques. And the reason why I personally don't like that and why I go towards the pre-loved market. Let me just let me just point out what's here with me right now. My birthday is coming up in July. I wanted a Hermes bag that was close to my birth year. And I've been on a search and a search and a search and that bag popped up. It is about four years off of my birth year, which is perfectly fine but I was looking for a vintage bag and I'm not gonna get into details about the bag and I, I didn't do an unboxing for this. This, this arrived yesterday and I did not do an unboxing for this because I felt that the things that were on my mind were much more profound than doing an unboxing of a, of a vintage Hermes bag. This whole thing surrounding the Hermes game in the boutique, really touched a nerve with me. It got me to thinking on all sides of the conversation. There are some people who love going into the boutique. There are, love, there are people who love the experience of opening or having the opportunity to purchase and open a brand spanking new Hermes bag, no matter what it is. It could be a Birkin, it could be a Kelly, it could be an Evelyn, it can be whatever it may be. Some people truly covet that experience and I do not take that away. On the other side, there are some, and I fall into that category where I do not feel it is necessary to have to go through those channels in order to acquire something that you just simply really would like to have. <laughs> Deeper than that, how dare some luxury entity tie my worthiness to purchase a bag to how much money that I, <laughs> I spend in their boutique. It got me to look at me and it got me to really process what is it that the luxury handbag market, what do they want from people? What, what do they want? You have handbags that are out here that cost, let alone more than rent, more than mortgage, but more than houses, more than cars. There are bags that are upwards of a half million dollars or more depending upon what you get into that you decide that you would want. And it kind of, it set me on a head trip, you guys. I, 
I am not even kidding. It set me on a real head trip because it was like, as if to say, you're making, well, these boutiques are making a decision about whether I am worth selling to or not, or any of us are worth selling to or not. The Hermes game and some others are games in which some people are very successful at winning. They go in, they do their thing because that's what they want to do. And they're successful at securing the bag, if you will. Look, kudos. If that is the route that you choose to take, this is not hate, this is not haterade, this is not envy, jealousy, none. But I do think that it does chip away at some people's desire of even being interested in it in the first place because I always thought that luxury and, and ownership of luxury items, specifically handbags or, or designer goods, was supposed to be fun. It was supposed to be enjoyable. It was supposed to be exciting. It wasn't supposed to be stressful. It wasn't supposed to be condescending. It wasn't supposed to be snobbish. It wasn't supposed to be, oh, well, I, I'm not going to show you that because they're not on the list. They haven't done this. They haven't brought that. I, I didn't think it was supposed to be that way. And <laughs> the actual enjoyment of it for me, I, I, I land myself on the side of being a collector because I, I love them. I, I love having things that are either so, so much more vintage than me. And I love the idea of having things that have a, a beautiful history. I have no idea where this bag has been. But what I do know is when I was four years old, this bag was newly purchased and loved by someone for almost 46 years before they decided to give it up. I do know that. And I think that's the side of the fence that, that I, I fall on when I think about luxury, whether it's brand new, whether it's not. I think about the history, whether it be the history with the person who previously owned it, or whether it be the history of the design house that introduced it. But this whole thing where it has come down to, it's beyond just the word competition. It has become stressful. It has become a circumstance where it is setting people into an arena where they've already excluded themselves because of the financial aspect of it, or they've already excluded themselves because of the intimidation coming off on the other side of the fence, meaning the, the salespersons or the, just the, the, the level of discomfort from walking into one of those luxury boutiques and someone is making a judgment call based upon what you decide you may or may not want to be willing to purchase when they present it to you. And it just, it just got me to the point where I have just come to realize I don't care what type of luxury brand it is. I am not about to be viewed as worthy or unworthy or is she going to buy or is she not going to buy? Because I'm not going to allow someone to put me in a category. You don't know what is in my wallet. You don't know what my capabilities are financially. You don't know what I already own in my closet, in my wardrobe, in my curated collection. You have no idea. And I think that these design houses, these luxury handbag houses especially, need to recognize that this is not about worthiness this is about who's willing to spend the money if they come into your store and they inquire about something and or versus someone who decides that they don't it's that simple and if they took that perspective i personally feel that <laughs> it would be a lot better experience all the way around it's a simple yes or no Here's the bag, would you like to purchase it or not? 
It shouldn't be a situation where it's a waiting list or it takes forever in a day or you have to do this or you have to do that or you have to hoop and jump and holler and scream and no, no, and no. I, I can't do that and I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to give you guys just what my feelings are about it because there are so many people who expressed most graciously how I was exactly feeling, but on a deeper level, it just got me thinking about worthiness. Everybody is worthy, and I feel everybody should have an opportunity if they'd like to get something as special as this or as special as something that they deem that they would like to have, plain and simple. I just wanted to share with you my feelings and my opinions about this whole Hermes or this whole luxury game when it comes down to being able to purchase a certain something or a certain, you get the point, designer item. Look, everyone falls on one side or the other. It's up for you to decide how you feel and what it is that you'd like to do. Not up to some boutique. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Be safe. And I will see you all next Sunday. Bye for now.